Okay, cool. So we're just standing in um, the Aya showroom in Mississauga. This is our head office. And uh, we just wanted to give you guys a bit of, look of the look of the space. I know everyone's trapped at home and you can't get out to see beautiful showrooms like ours. So we're just here, wanted to um, shoot a video and talk to you guys about some topics that you should think about when you're starting to plan a kitchen renovation and um, welcome all the questions so if anyone has any questions my husband has just joined on hello Jamie Dillon thank you for joining um, yeah so we're excited to talk to you guys um, if you have any feedback on things you'd like to hear about we'd love to get your feedback on uh, different events because we'd like to keep doing this and talking to you guys about um, different topics for kitchen renovations and um, see how we can help you virtually since we can't meet with you in person right now. So um, I guess we can get started. And so today we're going to talk about five topics that you should consider talking to your AYA designer about. So you've decided you want to renovate a kitchen or maybe you are building a new house and there's so many things to think about and we need lots of information from you. So the better prepared you are with um, information for us, the better we can help you. So I want to run through kind of my top five things that can help you get started and hopefully make the whole process uh, smoother for you. Uh, number one would be the style of the kitchen. That really helps us to get a good feel for the whole vibe you're looking to create and it really inspires the designer to kind of take you in the direction you need to go and um, kind of gets our creative juices flowing where we can come up with new ideas for you and really be creative on solving um, your kitchen space. So uh, style, color uh, is very helpful. It might change over the process, but if you have a vision in mind, anything you can bring to us, uh, start looking on, you know, Pinterest is a amazing resource because you can just type in what you're interested in. Um, you can even share that board with your designer so that we can really get a good handle on what that whole look is that, um, that you like, that you are hoping to achieve. Um, so we will start start with that and talk about things like trends, what's current right now. Um, you know, blue and green cabinets are really popular. We're seeing them everywhere right now. Is that um, is that a good fit for you? Do you love it right now, or is that something that really uh, has always been a color that you're interested in that? Um, you know, would suit your home and will have longevity in your house that you're not going to be tired of in five years. Because that's always the biggest fear that you're making this huge investment. And what if in a couple of years, uh, you know, possibly that trend has gone out. And if it doesn't, um, you know, still make sense for you and you don't still love it, then, then it's not a good choice. So it's really trying to think about what do you gravitate towards? What are the things that you've always loved? Not just what do you see out there right now that um, you, know, you think everyone is doing and it's what you need to do. If you're creating the house for yourself and it's somewhere you and your family are gonna live and you plan to live there for the foreseeable future, then um, you really need to give a lot of thought into um, that style and those colors that, that you're using. So that's, that's number one, style and color. Um, number two would be the functionality. That's, you know, that's why we design kitchens, is to make it functional, uh, usable for, for our customers to um, you know, make it a more enjoyable uh, for them to use the space and beautiful details that we can include, like we're showing you here with um, pot and pan drawers, storage for um, your oils and your spices, all of those things that are gonna tailor the kitchen to your needs. So it's really good to spend some time and think about how you use your kitchen. Um, everybody uses their space differently, right? Everyone's situation is different. You could be a family of two, you could be a family of seven. So your designer really needs to know that. How many people are in the kitchen? Who's cooking? Do you cook? Maybe you don't cook. Maybe you just um, do takeout, right? Who knows? 
Uh, are you baking a lot? Are the kids in the kitchen with you? Are they doing their homework? You know, what all is kind of taking place because we know the kitchen is the heart of the home, so what is happening in the space? Uh, because we want to, like I said, tailor the space to your specific needs. So really kind of take a, a look at how you, use, um, how you use your home or how you would hope to use your home once you've done this renovation. So that's two, uh, functionality. Number three would be the design of your home. So this is your kitchen. You want to put a stamp on it and create a new design, but it really needs to flow with the rest of your house. So whether you've tackled other rooms in your house or you have plans to do that after the kitchen or it's a whole home renovation at the same time, you want to think about what is that look that you want throughout your house. So uh, sharing that with your kitchen designer, if you're not working with an interior designer, um, we can kind of guide you to what the elements are that you can put in the kitchen that are going to um, you know, flow nicely throughout your home so that you've got a cohesive look and the kitchen doesn't stand out as something that doesn't have the same, um, the same character, the same style as the rest of your home. So um, giving that some thought is, uh, is a really good, good idea. Yeah, so um, at Aya, we've kind of tried to make it easy uh, for the customer to navigate through what we offer as far as styles. So to make it easier to kind of hone in on what you're looking for, uh, we've broken it into three categories. So there's urban, transitional, and classic. Uh, so our showroom here is a very large space, which is great for us. We can... Um, show you all of those different styles and how we've worked with our, uh, you know, styles and colors to create something different in all of the spaces. So this one you're looking at now is a more classic kitchen, which we're not seeing as much currently today, uh, but it is classic, so it's never a bad choice. Uh, obviously in the darker wood with more detail to the door, you've got paneling details, columns, uh, crown molding, so more of a traditional vibe um, where you would want, you know, something more ornate, something more furniture-like is what you get with this style. And then we move along here. So here, this one is um, one of our favorites. We get a lot of requests for this style uh, for a couple of reasons. It's a shaker door, which is timeless, and uh, people love that just clean, simple line. Uh, the color is anthracite, which is uh, charcoal, but it's a very warm charcoal. It's got a lot of a, you know a brown undertone, so it's very li livable. Um, it's a you know, it's a timeless color. And here we've done it with black iron knobs. So it keeps it, you know, more casual, more clean. You've got details like a simple cove molding, which is also very popular because it's just that simple, clean molding without any ornate detail. This kitchen also shows off something that we're seeing more and more of, which is a custom range hood. So this particular one is our Aspen hood, which has got um, you know, a beautiful angled line to it with a little bit of detail of the molding. Uh, and then done just really clean, all in the same color of the cabinetry. But this is an opportunity that you could do something really different. Um, a lot of times we're incorporating two colors. So this range hood could be an accent of a different color. It could even have two-tone, um, you know, adding, say, a wood detail to it. Here we've incorporated some more color and texture with the island. The black, Christine, wondering about the black hardware. Yeah, I think the black hardware um, is definitely a finish that's here to say, stay for the fu foreseeable future. Um, it's, it's clean, you can take it in a more modern direction, you can take it in a more classic direction, but you know, black is a, a neutral, it's classic. I think it's, um, it's a good choice uh, if you want a little bit of punctuation on your cabinets and uh, you, know, you don't want something in 
a more metal finish like a, a nickel or a, a brass. It's, it's definitely a choice that will stick by you. So let's keep walking through the showroom and we'll take a look at some more displays so we can give you guys some more, um, more ideas. Uh, this kitchen that we're looking at right now is uh, set up to be like a condo. So now, as you know, more and more condos are going up, more and more people are living in uh, small spaces. So this gives you an idea of what Aya can do to kind of um, pull together all your needs in a kitchen, but in a very small space. So uh, one of the highlights of this display would definitely be the pull-out table that can retract it folds up and retracts into the cabinetry space so you only need to pull it out you know say you're single or a couple and your parents are coming over for dinner pull out the table set up dinner and then when you're all done you can just pack it away which is awesome is that rob ford it is yes knob this this is called knob ford i'm sorry i don't remember the name of the artist that created it but it is Rob Ford made out of knobs. Ha ha ha. At Aya, we love all aspects of design, including art. So you'll see lots of really cool art pieces throughout the showroom. Um, what do I think about brass handles on brown or dark cabinets? I think it's beautiful. Uh, I love the brass hardware. So far it seems like it, the, the style is not um, going anywhere. I love the contrast of the warmer finish against the dark cabinets. And um, I think, again, it goes back to what do you like? So if brass is a finish that you've always been drawn to, then it's a great choice for you. If it's not, and it's just something that's interests you because it's trendy right now, then I would probably say, um, you know, ch choose something else. But hardware is a good one that you can easily change out down the road. So it's not a huge commitment. If, if you're going to take a risk on something, that's definitely a good one to do having the same so do I recommend having the same uh, hardware throughout the kitchen is there a rule of thumb for balancing if you want to do knobs and pulls um, there's no right or wrong answer a lot of the kitchens that you'll see in our showroom are one of the one or the other a knob or a pull this particular kitchen is a more classic style and here we've done a combination of knobs and pulls so rule of thumb typically is, yes, you want to balance them. If you don't have a good balance, say you're doing you know, the typical, which is you put knobs on doors and then you put pulls on drawers. If you only have one bank of drawers or maybe two and the rest of the kitchen is doors, maybe you want to keep it cohesive and just pick a knob or a pull for everything. Uh, this kitchen has a really nice balance of both, so that's why we've done the knobs and the pulls in this space. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered the top four um, things that you want to talk to your designer about. The last one is um, probably the most sensitive for most people, which is budget. Um, it's, it's always a challenge for people. They, a lot of times you've never done a kitchen renovation and you have no idea of what it's going to cost. Get a sense and have a, a budget in mind. Don't be afraid to share your budget with your designer because really we're here to help you and we're here to maximize uh, what you can do in your kitchen for what you want to spend. Um, we're not trying to make you spend every last dime, but we want you to get the benefit of everything you can have out of what you want to spend. So um, it's really important because we don't want to go through the whole design process and create, say, a $60,000 kitchen for you, and it turns out your budget was twenty. dollars We can design a kitchen for $20,000, but we really need to know um, what you are comfortable spending so that we can give you, like I said, you know, the best for your money, what you want to spend. We've got 12 different series of doors 
So price point one all the way to 12. So there's a vast price range and we want to make the kitchen suit the style that you want, the functionality and the budget. I think also maybe it's important to let them know that within their budget, where do they want to place their money, right? Like if they want a certain look of door, Yes. You don't have to get it wood. You can get the same look in MDF and put your money into accessories if that's important to your counterpart. Yeah. So Nelson was just saying about the different materials, which was another one of my points. I think I jumped ahead. I think I said four, but we weren't on four. That's okay. I'm a kitchen designer, not a mathematician. Um, so materials is the other part that you want to talk to your designer about. There's not only the finishes of the cabinets, there's countertops, there's backsplash, there's appliances. There's so many places where your money is going. Um, and it's good to talk to your designer again about your budget and what you're looking for in all those areas so that we can really tailor um, the money, help you to kind of sort through that and give you some indication of where you can spend and where you can save. Uh, Nelson was just mentioning a very a good tip that we do a lot is say you want a white kitchen. They can be expensive, it's a painted finish. We have alternatives that are much less in cost. They're going to give you the same look and then they're going to allow you to spend on maybe the other things that are important to you. Maybe you've got your heart set on a marble countertop uh, that's taking up a lot of your budget or appliances um, do take up a fair amount of your budget. So, um, you know, we want to help you to kind of bring that all together and, and give you the best advice possible of where to kind of allocate the money. The worst thing you want to do is plan the kitchen, order the cabinets, and then find out all of these other elements are going to blow you way over your budget. And now you have to make sacrifices that you didn't want to make. So having all of these conversations up front uh, you know, which takes some time and it takes some research and um, thinking on your part. But a kitchen is not something that um, you renovate every day. So you really want to take the time and, uh, and have these conversations with your designer. Obviously now we can't have the conversation in person, but um, you know, we're here for virtual meetings. We've been doing a lot of meetings over Zoom and just, uh, you know, it gives us an insight into your kitchen. Uh, so that we can kind of walk through and uh, and get a, even a better handle now on on your space and how we could better help you um, and then we're presenting the design and all the pricing to you virtually which is um, has been working out really well so that way you can kind of keep going with your plans um, while you're stuck at home and uh, hopefully we can help you with that do we have any other questions does anybody have any questions you know we want to hear from you guys um, we plan to do more of these uh, live events so we're looking to you for ideas what do you guys want to hear about um, what topics interest you uh, with kitchens that that hopefully we could help you about um, if you guys have any questions right now I'd love to hear from you and we can go through some other details or or more information on what we've talked about. Uh, Marla's asking, how long does it take to design a kitchen? Uh, how long does it take to design a kitchen? That's a good question. Uh, it's a process. So uh, it could be anywhere from, you know, our initial consultation from when we're ready to present a kitchen to you is typically about a week, uh, give or take, depends on the size of the project. But typically about a week, then we're gonna do some back and forth you might have some tweaks and that can depend on how long that whole process takes uh, it depends on where you are in your renovation have you just started the renovation or are you doing all of the pre-planning ahead of time before you start renovating uh, because things can come up on site once you start the project that we have to make changes as we go along and then the way it works is we come out and we measure the kitchen once um, everything is framed and hopefully you've got your rough-ins plumbing electrical in and then we come out and measure and that's when we order and then from that point you're looking at typically about eight weeks for the cabinets to pr be produced okay. Next question is if possible can you give an ideas for color for an island currently have a new home but very small counter space light gray cabinets wood floor brown brownish gray dark color for an island please 
Okay, so good question. New home, you need more space, so you want to do an island, light gray with dark brown floors. Um, you could stay in that color co you know, combination and you could go with um, like a two-tone and do a darker gray would be a really pretty um, sort of softer palette. Um, you could go white if you want something to kind of freshen, freshen it up, kind of like the kitchen actually we have behind us here. Now this one's a dark gray with the white island but it can be fun for a pop of color and to do something different. These floors are also dark brown, so it kind of gives you a good idea of how that can give you a fun um, pop of color. Uh, black is always a good choice. It's a neutral, so it'll work well with all of um, you know the light gray, the dark brown. Um, but I would probably stay within the family of those colors. So stay within the gray, go to a black or go to a white. Pick a, pick a neutral that's, um, you know, going to be timeless and and give you a exactly. nice contrast. When are you ready for installations? We're actually doing installations right now. It's so good question about installations. Um, in the current situation, we are still producing cabinets. We were deemed essential because uh, we're providing kitchens for, um, you know, new homes where obviously you need a kitchen to move into a house. Uh, having said that, if uh, your home is occupied, we are not able at this time to install. So, uh, you know, if you replace your order tomorrow, cabinets would be ready in eight weeks. And hopefully we are... We're also, it's a great time to design now because we're the 25, the 20% 20 off sale and we'll hold the cabinets without cost to the customer. Yeah, so um, a good point is uh, we do have a sale on right now, so it's a great time to take advantage and get 20% off the cabinets. So we can do all the design work um, so you've got everything ready to go. You can put down a deposit, we can order the cabinets. If in eight weeks from now we are not ready, you know, we're still um, in this situation that we're in now where we can't install cabinets, we will hold the cabinets for you at no charge. Um, and then as soon as things are back up and, and running, then we can come out and install. But lead time is typically eight weeks. That is from when uh, we can measure your kitchen and you can place the order. Um, next question is, what's your favorite pantry options? Favorite pantry options, good question. Um, I like to do rollout shelves in pantries. I just find that they uh, work a lot better than some of the other systems. So I'll show you guys an example. This is a smaller pantry. Uh, this one actually shows our different options because at Aya we do have um, a la carte options for different types of drawers. But I really find this system works best because you can open just the door, uh, the drawer that you're looking for, see everything that you want easily take it out as opposed to some of you know you see the larger pull-out pantries we do offer those as well a thing to keep in mind about those is they are very heavy and especially when they're loaded up and then you're kind of limited because you're lifting something up and you have to kind of pull it out tilt it to get it out because there's a fixed shelf above so this is by far the system that I like um, for a straightforward pantry solution we do a lot of other cool um, details for pantries. If you want to come over here and I'll show you guys some other ways that we can set up pantries. So here's a really pretty one that we've got that you can see has got the really nice uh, integrated lighting so it creates that really pretty glow at the back of the cabinet when you open it. And then underneath you've got these really great deep wood drawers a little hidden drawer on top so this could be um, you know tablecloths and placemats and napkins and things like that uh, it could even be your spices depending on your situation of the layout of the kitchen um, and then you can have you know dry goods all throughout in these drawers obviously these drawers are great for your pots pans because they're a nice deep height even some small appliances will fit inside those drawers as well how do you feel about top-loading microwaves from Rosalie's? Top-loading microwaves, I love them. Uh, when they first came out, I don't know how many years ago, there was a lot of resistance against them. 
the big question was, can I fit my like Tim Hortons or Starbucks cup in them? Yes, they do fit. Uh, we actually have one here. It's not plugged in, so I can't open it for you, but um, just a really great solution because microwaves are like the least pretty of all of the appliances. So as a designer, I'm always looking, where can I hide that microwave and not see it? Uh, so in a base cabinet is ideal but nobody likes to have to crouch down open the door so this has probably been you know the biggest change in appliances I would say over the past few years and uh, people are loving them they are using them a lot and it's become sort of a standard appliance now that we're putting into I would say most kitchens yeah um, so Kathy is asking what information do you need to get the, the process started Good question. So to get the process started, um, ideally we want some measurements from you of your space. We're not holding you to them. They don't need to be exact, but it gives us a good sense of the space so that we can move ahead and talk to you about a floor plan. Uh, given the situation now, like I said, we would be doing a virtual meeting rather than meeting in person. So uh, ideally we're doing a FaceTime or a Zoom call and then we can actually see your kitchen, which is very helpful to us to um, start the conversation of areas that we need to address. Uh, and then from there, once we've got pictures from you or we do a virtual meeting and measurements, then uh, we'll go through, it usually takes about an hour to go through all the questions, basically everything that we kind of just touched upon. Uh, so that we can put together a design presentation for you. So we put together a drawing for you, floor plan, elevations, uh, perspective views, so you can get a good sense of what the space looks like. And uh, with that, we also have a budget, provided we know door style and finish and all of those details. And yeah, that's how we get started. So it's really easy if you can just, you know, take a few minutes, take some measurements, um, contact our showroom, a designer will contact you, and you know, if you have trouble doing the measurements, we're happy to walk that, uh, walk it through with you. We can even do that virtually to make it easier, so you know where you're measuring. And um, yeah, and then we've got the process started. And then, um, like I said, it's at least a week to prepare a design. And then going back and forth is always different. Uh, Jojo wants to know what is the most popular flooring in a kitchen, tile or wood? Uh, what is the most popular flooring in a kitchen? Well, uh, in recent years, I would say it's hardwood. And I think the big driver in that is uh, that we have more open concept floor plans now in our homes. So you want that flow and that continuity throughout your home. Uh, so it just naturally, you run that hardwood all the way throughout. Uh, a lot of people have an issue with hardwood. Obviously, there's the water concern. Um, so tile is still a great choice. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, there's some beautiful porcelain tile, I would say is probably the number one pick after hardwood would be porcelain. And we're typically recommending you go with a larger format tile so that you've got less grout lines. Okay. Um, Anne-Marie wants to know, what are your thoughts on engineered boxes versus plywood, which is better? Oh, good question, Anne-Marie. Uh, yeah, so at IO we offer two box constructions. We offer a standard particle board, which is pretty much an industry standard. So it's a particle board with a melamine finish, which you can choose. We have a few different colors. And then we also make a plywood construction, um, which comes with a birch veneer, which is actually what we were looking at inside this cabinet is the birch uh, veneer finish. So what are my thoughts on it? Um, I think definitely you have to look at your budget. If the budget allows, if it's a home you know you're staying in, then um, having the best possible option for that material, which would be the plywood, is definitely a good choice. Uh, I think we find a lot of times that there's other driving details that people would rather spend on, to be honest. Um, so I think this is one that's usually, um, you know, going with the standard of, of the particle board versus the plywood. Where I find it's a good investment to go with an upgrade is definitely our drawers. You've got lots of choices, but one of the really nice options is 
the wood drawer as opposed to the aluminum it's um, you know not only a pretty uh, detail but there's lots of benefits to it you get a higher side on the side of the drawers you've got a solid face to the drawer box that the drawer front is being affixed to as opposed to the aluminum which there's nothing wrong it's a it's a wonderful drawer but it's using the drawer face to be attached to the cabinet to make it a box so just some little details like that um, but again it's a large uh, difference in price so we typically uh, break that price out for you so that you've got that um, that knowledge of where you're spending your money and you can make an informed decision on you know what works best for you and your overall design and your needs so Kaylee is asking we have a display that showcases the midnight blue door yeah the midnight blue so the midnight blue um, came out a few years ago it's been very popular for us this is it uh, here it's um, a really pretty dark blue you know really a, a nice classic navy color it was actually designed um, or the color was actually made uh, in conjunction with house and home they had a a client that was a chef that uh, we were collaborating with and this color was actually um, created out of that collaboration uh, so it's a really beautiful neutral blue it really has become a neutral in design and uh, it's a classic color that's a great choice you can see it here with our oyster white which is our most popular white um, it's a really nice fresh contrast Are we seeing more natural uh, wood tone islands? Um, to be honest, I haven't seen a lot. I'm a big fan of the natural uh, wood finishes. Not necessarily seeing them in an island, but definitely interest in an overall kitchen. Um, what we're looking at right here is uh, maple with just a clear coat on it. Uh, but I think by far the direction with the natural woods has been oak so we're doing a lot of oak and white oak um, like I said this is the natural finish and then we also have it in a color called rye which has got just a little bit more depth and a little bit more of a brown undertone and I found it's been uh, quite popular as well uh, you have custom wall racks to display recipes or quotes or decorative plates custom wall rack so as far as um, custom details things like plate racks um, we do have the traditional style like you're seeing here uh, we do offer a lot of open shelf designs and really that's something we're designing with our client to suit their needs uh, we can get very creative and and create something that works for you maybe you've seen an image of something that you like and we can um, you know create that for you any other questions from you guys um, we had one about the outsourcing installers or are they I employees Okay, so our installers um, have been with us forever. I've been with the company 14 years and it's the same group of guys that I've been working with from the beginning. They're amazing. They are true craftsmen. So they could build you a kitchen from scratch if um, you, know, you needed, that's how talented they are. So we're working with the same group of guys. So you've got that peace of mind that when that person's coming in your home, uh, we know them, we've worked with them and their quality is, um, you know, it's excellent and they stand by it and we stand by the the installation even with the uh, property brothers they do all the work there yeah even with you know maybe you've seen some of our work on say property brothers or other um you know media outlets that we've worked with in the past those are still always aya installers the same group of people that would you know you would be working with to design your kitchen and install it are the same people that um, are working on those projects that you see that's great. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, it's great to hear from you. We love your questions. Like I said, we're going to do this again. Um, so look out for that um, event date. And we're going to work on topics of what we can share with you guys to hopefully give you some more insights to kitchens.
sending in the questions and we'll answer them in other videos. Yeah, so keep sending in your questions. Um, like I said, we want to hear from you guys. We want ideas on what we should be uh, touching upon uh, next time we talk to you. So keep your questions coming and we'll, um, we'll hopefully be able to answer them the next time we talk to you guys.